Inc. Products is going to show you how to install our new Executive Series 3 Continuous Ink System. You're going to get all the parts and pieces. You're going to get the latest COC Smart Chip, our double loop hose bracket, our ink tank with the isobaric chamber. Now this double loop hose bracket, that eliminates the need for uh, backflow dampers. Actually it works a lot better than backflow damper. And you get all the parts and pieces. Very simple to install. Okay, now before we install the CIS system, we want to run a nozzle check. So on the printer you want to go to setup. Then you're going to go to maintenance and then print the nozzle. Okay, now before you put the system in, this is what you want to do. You want to make sure the nozzles are firing correctly. Okay, I got a little bit missing in black and parts of my magenta are completely missing. So if you were to install a CIS now, you might have a problem, then you'd think it was a CIS. Now this is a brand new printer, which is the Workforce 3640, but this applies to any of the Epson printers. You always want to run the nozzle check first. And you can try doing one or two cleanings to see if that'll come back. Okay, it says clean the printed, which is what I'm going to do. Proceed. There you go. Now to ask me all colors, black, I'm going to do all colors. Now when you do a printhead cleaning, every Epson is a little different. So look at your operating manual and that should tell you how, it's, how to do that. Now I'm doing a printhead cleaning. Why it's doing that, I'll point out the parts and pieces that you get with the uh, Executive Series 3. You get these long tips, they go on a syringe, makes it easier to fill the ink tank. You get the purging tool for the cartridges should you have to purge if you ran out of ink. And this little piece of hose is used to prime up the printhead. You'll see that in the instructions that we send you. You get all the parts and pieces, all the right clips, depending on your model. Now you need to rock those bottles before installing the continuous ink system. That's going to take all the ink that's in the isobaric chamber and bring it up to the front ink supply chamber. Now I'm going to show you how to install it on the Workforce 3640, 3620, they all install exactly the same. So I brought the cartridges over so I, so I could get them out. So what I'm going to do is reach behind the printer and unplug the power cable. Now I'll be able to move this without damaging anything. Open up the cover. You don't have to take the cover off. You're going to take out the Epson cartridges. With our system, it does not require you to cut anything off the printer or take anything off the printer. So we're not going to avoid any warranty. Now I already balanced, let me move this stuff out of the way, I already balanced the ink tank. That'll take all the ink out of the isobaric chamber. And the next thing I'm going to do, the lid open, I'm going to slide these through that opening. This way I don't have to take that off. So you're going to just go up and slide it right through. Okay. And then I'm going to put it right down in there. Make sure it's down in there. You want to hear it click in. It's got to click in, otherwise you will get, cannot recognize. Take your time. It's really a tight fit. There you go. Oops. I'm pushing it down so I clicked in. I usually push right here by the circles 
be careful with this. This is the connector there. I'm going to click it up again just to show you what I did. So I'm going to push it down. You hear it click. So I'm pushing on the tabs. Make sure it clicks. There's another one. After I get it down, I push on these little tabs here, and that clicks it in. You'll know. If it's not in, you'll get cannot recognize. Okay, now we can close this. Okay. Now let me point this out. Make sure the hose is coming out like that. So don't tangle it up in there. There. Now, I'm going to put one hose bracket right here. Here again, the 3640, 3620 works the same. I'm going to line it up right here with this, just like that. That's how the hose bracket's going to line up. Okay, now I'm going to install the first hose bracket. I peeled the tape off. What I want to do is line it up right here. Right between that. I'm going to put it right there, right at the very edge. Just like that. Stick it down. Now I can bring the hose. Now this is important. You see the way the hose comes out? I want it to go right into there like that. I'm going to put it right in there. You don't want to have it twisted or anything like that. You want to come right up out. And then we're going to put it right in there. We're going to do hose travel. So you're going to push it down inside the hose bracket. Okay, now it's in the hose bracket. Now I'll be able to move this. i come all the way over. Okay, go back. And that's what you want. Now there's going to be another hose bracket right on the outside. So I'm going to have the hose come along. And I'll lay it just like that. So you take the little black hose bracket, you peel it, and you're going to stick it right on the side like that. Okay, now I put the other hose bracket, got it down there. Now, I want to point this out. <clears throat> A lot of these printers now have extra trays and everything, so if I left the system down low like this, it causes too much back pressure so the ink can't be drawn up. So the key is this little line right here. And I want the, the case to sit even with the top of the printer right here. So I got a little box I'm going to set it on. You can find anything you can and then you'll just be able to set it up there like that. See? Now you can go up a little bit higher, but if you're just a little low like that, that's fine. Now, before I turn it on, it's very important, I'm going to remove the little black, these little plugs in the back here. These are where the air goes into the isobaric chamber. Don't take the front out. Now you close off the air plugs and open up the big one up front, so that's where you're going to fill it. But one plug has to be in, uh, the little plug has to be in when you're um, filling up the ink chamber. Then we gave you a syringe with a long tip that you can go with your bottle of ink, draw it up, and then when that plugs out, you go in there and fill it up. The syringes work a lot better with these tips. Sometimes uh, you see the, the bottles with the little poor tips, they wind up splitting and leaking all over. That's why we don't use them. Okay, I balanced it, I closed it, right next to the printer. Now I'm going to go plug it in and we're going to do hose travel. Now also there's a little interlock here. This thing right here goes down and goes into that interlock. Well, because we have that, we have to have room for the hose. can't go all the way down. So we give you this little jumper. It goes right in there. Just in there. Press it in. So now it's going to think the lid is down. So you'll be able to close it almost all the way. There'll be just a little gap right here. So now we'll go plug it in and we'll watch 
for hose travel. Now if you get close the scanner unit, that means that this little plug, jumper plug, is not in all the way. Because once you get it in all the way, then you're going to see the Epson sign come up. So now it's going to go through and check all the cartridges. This could take up to one to two minutes. Now if you get cannot recognize the following ink cartridges, try installing them again. That means that we didn't put them in. That's possible. You didn't get them in right. If they're not clicked in, they won't work. So now go to proceed. Take out the interlock. Now the cartridges are going to move over. Now I'm going to take them up and try reseating them. Make sure they all click in. Okay, just reseated them again. Got my hose back again. I'm going to put the interlock plug back in. Now it's going to go check the cartridges again. It's going to go back and forth. That's critical. If you don't get them in correctly, you'll get cannot recognize. Now it says preparing the ink system. That means it's in correctly. What it's going to do is charge up the printhead at this time. Now we didn't have to cut anything in the printer. We didn't have to take anything off. And it's very simple to install. Interlock plug, hose bracket, hose bracket. Make sure you lift the box up. Now the CIS can go even with the top right here or a little bit lower, but it cannot go on the table like you normally would. That's because it has added tray here. And even if it didn't have an added tray, you want to make sure it's just below the top of the printer when the scanner is open. And if you see a little bit of air in here, that'll go away. That'll once you do a, a printhead cleaning, that'll all disappear. Okay, now once you've installed our continuous ink system cartridges in the system, Epson will say you have not installed genuine Epson. That is correct. So you say proceed, proceed. Yes, you want to continue because they're not Epson. That's how simple it was to set up our continuous sync system. Now here, it just said, cannot recognize the cyan, because I've been printing with this. So, first thing I want to do is take out the plug. Now move over. like I was going to replace the cartridge. Now, reach in, hold it, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, let go. Come over here, put the plug back in. It's going to check the cartridges. Again, it's going to say you have not used genuine Epson cartridges. Proceed. Okay, keep go through the whole motion again. Every time, you have to do this every time. Yes. Now let's go to the ink levels. There, it reset all the ink levels back up. Now this is the next thing you got to watch for, the waste box. That's around the back. We have those too with our COC smart chip that you can buy it and it just resets and resets. You don't have to buy a new one from Epson. I don't know if you know that, but it's behind the back here. 
and you can take it out and replace it. That's what the box looks like. It slides out. It's got a chip on it. Epson gets $30, I think, for it. We have one where when you take it out, push it back in, it resets. Also, we added a little waste bottle inside. So instead of having ink all over, you just take it out and dump the waste bottle. For more information about that, go to inkproducts.com.